Uh, good morning, this is Neil with another Off The Lip Radio Show, show number 704, and I'm here today with... Dave Krellen. Okay, Dave, tell me what you're all about. You got in touch with me with something that's truly fascinating, and uh, I'd like to let, you let, let, let the audience know what you're all about. All right, well, in this, in this particular context, through a mutual friend, uh, we got in contact. I have a project called Decolonize the Surf, which is an art activism project looking at the history of racism, racialized exclusion, diversity in surf culture, specifically California surf culture, but right. surf culture lar- at, at large. Yeah. And it's, it's, an, it's a physical installation, and it takes place at surf sites from San Francisco all the way to San Diego. Okay, all right. Perfect. And uh, so, tell yeah. me about tell me it's a it's a project. Tell me about the project and what you have to do to get involved. Sure. So it's it takes place on a number of different levels. Primarily, it is an online engagement. What I did was I took over 400 surf style stickers, embedded with QR codes and the phrase "decolonize the surf" on them. And we can just get we, before we go any further. We can just get to one of those stickers right here, right? Yeah, totally. So right. the stickers look like this. I took over 400 of these, and I put them at surf sites from San Francisco all the way to San Diego. Okay. Surf shops. Any, anybody complain about you putting stickers anywhere? Um, no, no, there are a couple times, truthfully, that I had to kind of wash my ass because, right. uh, you know, uh, oh yeah, can, how much yeah, you wear? Yeah, you can say whatever you want. Okay, all right. <laughs> uh, that I had to be really aware because I, I, I could tell that there was a kind of vibe, you know, like if they right. saw what I was doing, it was going to be a problem. Right. Um, so, so all the way down to San Diego. Yeah. And basically, as you saw, when you hit your phone with that, with that, on that QR code, you get yeah. just short videos that complicate the kind of invisible idea of whiteness as this normative place, this kind of normal vibe, right, that, right. that exists in surf culture. I grew up in Manhattan Beach in surf culture. We came up through a system that just told us that's how it rolled, right? Oh, there's, you know, there's a handful, you know, of Hawaiians, and we know that... Hawaiians and Polynesians created and evolved the sport. Yep. But aside from that, money, press, photos, magazines, everything is predominantly white, predominantly male, but predominantly white. So this so, is this real quickly, I'm gonna put this in here. This is about all about racism in surfing. Correct. Okay. Correct. So these videos kind of complicate that narrative, right? They did they implant in your head some ideas and some historical uh, footage that hopefully will get one to think about, oh wait a sec. There is more to this, and wow, racism embedded itself in surfing just like it did in all the areas of our life here in the United States. But it hasn't been spoken about. And it's rarely spoken about or even thought of because, again, this idea of it being invisible, it's so normalized. Right. And also, too, when you think of surfing, right, you think, oh, it's all good. You just need a board and it's all good. Right, right. Just come down. Everyone's welcome. And that is not the case if you talk to surfers of color. Right. That's often not the case at all, and there have been systemic and and, and uh, structural laws like land covenants, other ways that people of color have been kept from accessing the beach and surf life. So all that's kind of in these videos and then after that it goes to the website, which is a place where people can read magazine articles, hear from surfers of color, you know, access to links to videos. So it's just bringing to, it's, like you, what you're doing is bringing to light to the public Correct. or surfers or the public in general about, about racism in surfing. Right. And, and giving them opportunities to both educate themselves right. as well as get hip to like, okay, wow, this is fucked up. Yeah. How can I help? What can I do? Right. So there's resources there that they can get involved with organizations of color that are teaching generations of new kids to surf, that are changing the laws, changing the narrative of surfing to be more inclusive, as well as ways they can educate themselves, just ways that they can take action right, right. rather than just feel bad about it. Right. So the, there's four videos. Right. Right. Can you tell us about a little bit about each video? Sure. So, uh, depending on the sticker that you access, okay. will take you to one of four videos. And that's kind of random, you okay. know, whatever sticker you happen to clock, right? Okay. One video is a general kind of visual imagery showing all the whiteness in surfing and surf culture with an audio narration from a surfer of color talking about how racism is still a thing. They, people of color still experience this all the time. Yeah. One is about um, Bruce's Beach, which many people know, the property that was purchased in the early 1900s from a a black couple that made it a thriving beach resort, and they were forced out through racism and through 
the racist implication um, application of the law of eminent domain okay. to steal the property from them. Right. And that just literally almost a hundred years later now just got returned to the Bruce family legacy. Yeah. That's so a that's very a, interesting story, by the way. So that, yeah. It, people should check it out. Yeah, sure. You can, out. if you Google Bruce's beach, you'll get yeah. tons of good information. Yeah. There's one about Nick Gabaldon, which is the first documented black surfer in California and his story who got very little notoriety until probably the half, last half dozen years or so. And then the last one is about Mickey Dora, a longboarder who's a legend for in surf culture, who was a really unfortunate and disgusting racist. Okay. And it just highlights some of the things he said and the ways he moved through the world that draw attention to the fact that this is an issue in surfing. Let me ask you, how did you get involved in this pro how, 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 how did you get involved in this project? Or, uh, you, how did you launch it? And why did you launch it? Good question. Um, so uh, I started this project as part of my uh, master's of fine art, my MFA at UC Santa Cruz in digital arts and new media. And like I said, I grew up in surf culture. And my professor, we were talking, we become friends, and she had said, you know, she just kind of dropped this offhand comment, like, hey, you know, sometimes somebody should do something on racism and surfing. And I was like, oh, interesting. Yeah. But it didn't really register because I thought, like, how could there be much there? Right. right. Right? I mean, I grew up in Manhattan Beach surf culture. I just thought I still had that same idea in my head, right? Like, right. it's all right. good. Once I started researching, I went, oh, my God, this there's a lot there and that was a real awakening and an accountability for me for sure of how I was complicit in perpetuating those stereotypes right. and that structure by not educating myself about the real history of what was really going on and so from there and then once I found out about Bruce's Beach because it was a 10 minute bike ride from where I came up yeah I was like nope this is what I gotta do yeah and initially it was supposed to be a gallery installation which there's still that part of it but when I had to answer the question who is it for yeah. And I realized I need this to be for surfers and yeah, white surfers yeah, 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 in yeah, yeah. specifically. I became really aware that I needed to find some way to take the project and the ideas embedded in the project to surfers, hence the stickers. How'd you come up with a sticker idea? You just, you just didn't, you, I mean, you didn't write an article or, or try and find right. a reporter or journalist. You came up with an idea right. of the sticker right. with the QR code. Well, for me, one of the things is that one, I wanted something that spoke to surfers, right? Yeah. An article, a, you know, a scholarly piece, academia. Uh, you know, how's it going to resonate? Yeah. I wanted it. I grew up in surf culture. I wanted something that surfers could respond to, could understand if they chose to. Yeah. That was, and also what, where where surfers live. Yeah. Down at the beach. Yeah. Surf culture, sticker culture. Those there's a lot of overlap there. Right. And, um, and so the stickers were really a delivery device. For the information. This is this is just about surfing. It's a very small spec. I mean, right. have you thought about taking the stickers and and imp, imp, uh, implying it with other sports? I, I mean, I've thought about using similar methodologies. Yeah. If not stickers, some other ways of of what it really unlocked for me is there's there's a great way to have the conversations, have the dialogues, right? Yeah. By if you just think through a given sport, a given activity, a right. given whatever, right? right. Okay, where's the what's what's not being talked about, yeah, right? right? And then trying to figure out that's what this a lot for me is how to figure out. Okay, how do you then have that conversation with folks where they live right. for what's important to them, right? So that's really what the stickers were about in this context was a way to have the the, the dialogue right here at the beach. Uh, to, have you had uh, comments or praise from? Uh, uh, the black community. So Did they say they spoke to you about it. So from the very beginning, yeah. I realized that I needed to educate myself, which I will continue to do for the rest of my life. But I needed to reach out to uh, leaders of color in surfing, scholars, creatives, heads of surf organizations, to better understand what was going on. And to also understand what the limits were of what was what, what was appropriate for me to address, right? right? Right. And all along the way, I have to say, I was terrified at the beginning. What you're getting involved with. And also that I was going to miss that, right? right? Because that's a really, for I think for white folks wanting to become truly anti-racist allies and stand in solidarity can be scary. It was for me. Yeah, yeah. But I have to say it was through the 
guidance, friendship, critique, understanding, and kind of largesse of folks like Bella Bonner from Black Surf Santa Cruz, yeah. Kaida up at uh, Black Surfers Inc., scholars, all these folks that I reached out to were so generous with their time and so generous with their abilities to assist and help me shape the project. So it has been really rewarding to have their input and their feedback in how to best move forward and make this project what it is. And, yeah. and, and I've gotten good feedback from them about where the project ended up and what I was able to speak to and the way I was able to speak to it. So that's very encouraging. Okay. And uh, have you had a problem with, have you had any vandalism or problem or issues with the stickers being uh, in, plain, in plain view? Uh, so there have been, so overwhelmingly, I would say that most of the time, you know, the stickers end up being where they are. Right. Now, st sticker culture is what it is, right? So right, right, right. if something just gets stickered over because that's how sticker culture does, no worries. But the times when I've witnessed my decolonized issue of sticker defaced or taken down when everything else around it yeah. is left untouched, yeah. That makes one think because that is a willful act yeah. of wanting to remove that information from the public discourse. And so, you know, I, I since I'm not a visual part of the project, everybody would come up to me and get in my face, yeah. right? Yeah. But, you know, you see it in, in where the stickers are removed or when they're defaced with something that has kind of possibly white supremacist leaning tendencies and the message on the sticker that's over it. So there's some of that going on and that's all information, yeah. you know, okay. about the state of affairs. The, the, the website is, the website is? Decolonizethesurf.com. Yeah, and it's on Facebook? It's, there's Instagram? a Facebook page, but Instagram, there's definitely a thriving Instagram thing. Okay. And you just go to the website, just go to okay. www.decolonizethesurf.com or go down to a surf place, go down to your local surf, you know, uh, spot and you might see one of these somewhere and just right. hit it with your phone. Right there. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, the project will continue to grow and I'm gonna, I'd like to expand it to include a more diverse range of perspectives, indigenous perspective and critique. There's lots of room to talk about other aspects of what's missing in surf culture vis-a-vis -vis like queer culture, ableist culture. You know, there's a lot of really good but difficult dialogues to yeah. be had to make surfing live up to its potential yeah. which is such a beautiful sport such a beautiful way to move through the world but we just need to have it live up to its that potential thank you for the interview thanks man. thank you for taking the time thank you brother. good luck to you dave thanks y'all uh, take care really appreciate it and uh we'll see you with another off Net radio show next tuesday with next tuesday yeah with gail pellerin and we have shepherd coming on we have justin justin cummings who's yeah. a black skater surfer uh, running for running for supervisor here in Santa Cruz, and once again, Dave, thank you so much for thank your time. Thank you. Decolonize the surf people.